Lava flows, cannon-like blasts, earth-shattering explosions. Why does one word, eruption, describe things so completely different? The secret lies in a system scientists use to classify volcanic fury. They decode it by breaking it down into three essential dimensions. Think of this as your cheat sheet to the language of fire. First, the mechanism what powers the explosion. Is it powered by pure magma? Magma meeting water? Or superheated steam and no magma involved? Second, the style. How does it behave? Is it calm and effusive? Or violent and explosive? Third, the size. How powerful is it? The Volcanic Explosivity Index, or VEI, measures the height of the eruption column and how much material is blasted into the sky. VEI-0 can fill a swimming pool, and a VEI-8 can blast enough material to fill an entire sea. But what exactly is being ejected? We often picture lava, but the most powerful eruptions create something else, a deadly hailstorm of rocky debris. Let's meet the fragments. Any rock blasted from a volcano is called a pyroclast, literally fire broken. We sort them simply by size. We have ash, fine abrasive rock dust, lapilli, pebble size from a pea to a walnut. And for the heavy artillery, if it was solid when ejected, it's a volcanic block. If it was molten, shaped mid-air as it flew, that's a volcanic bomb. Both can be the size of a car, deadly, precise, fast. Together, they make up tephra, the total debris from an eruption. Now that we speak the language of volcanic debris, let's see it in action. Let's start with one of the most sudden and most deceptive eruptions, the phreatic eruption. Its power isn't magma, it's steam. Water seeps into hot rock, flashes into vapor, and explodes with brutal force. The result, a brutal steam blast hurling scalding water, shattered rock, and ash. No magma, no warning, just a sudden blast. That's what makes it so dangerous. And the headlines prove it. To all Volcano Philippines 2020, a sudden eruption sent a massive bloom alerting thousands. Mount Onteke, Japan 2014, a calm hiking day turned catastrophic. A steam blast claimed 63 lives. These are the eruptions that strike from silence, a volcano's ultimate stealth attack. Now let's witness a phreato magmatic eruption, where magma joins the fight. When molten rock meets water, it's a violent duel. The magma is shattered into a jet of ash and lapilli, torn apart by roaring clouds of vapor. Then comes its deadliest move, the base surge. A fast-moving avalanche of ash and steam racing across the water surface. This process takes many forms depending on where it happens. In shallow water like lakes and seas, a Circean eruption. Beneath ice, subglacial. Deep in the ocean, submarine, where lava cools into strange pillow shapes. We've seen it at Taal Volcano. It's explosions driven by magma meeting water. In 1965, Taal revealed its deadly base surge, a searing cloud racing across Taal Lake. Yet from this same destructive process come wonders too, like Circe Island of Iceland, born from the sea and the hauntingly beautiful pillow lava formed in the deep. Now let's turn to pure magma. Hawaiian eruption is the calm side of chaos, effusive, gentle, mesmerizing. Fluid lava rises easily, pulling into glowing lava lakes. Gases escape in tall lava fountains that light the night sky. A thin ash plume may appear, but the true spectacle is the endless lava flow. Slow, relentless, unstoppable. We see this rhythm of creation in Iceland's Fagradalsfjak and Hawaii's Kilauea, where molten rivers build new land with every eruption. Not all eruptions destroy. Some rebuild the earth. Welcome to the rhythm of a Strombolian eruption. Explosive but controlled. Short, rhythmic burst like a heartbeat. Each blast fires a lava fountain, not gentle like a wine but sharp and cannon-like blast. Each explosion launches glowing bombs and lapilli skyward. Light ash drifts down dusting the slopes. 
the twin blast is slow lava flow script outward, building the cone layer by layer. Stromboli and Fuego erupt this way. And here's the incredible part. Stromboli has erupted this way for over 2,000 years, earning its title, the Lighthouse of the Mediterranean. Let's meet the Volcanian eruption. Thick magma plugs the vent, pressure builds, then explosion. A dense ash cloud shoots up 10 kilometers, forming the signature cauliflower plume. Volcanic bombs and lapilli rain around the crater while ash drifts downwind like snow. We see it in Chanchaguito in Guatemala and in frequently erupting Sakurajima, a live demo of controlled volcanic fury. Now we meet one of Earth's most destructive forces, the Pelayan eruption. It begins with ultra-thick magma that refuses to flow. Instead, it builds a brittle lava dome, a pressure cup ready to burst. Then, the dome collapses, the volcano uncorks itself. The blast sends a column of ash, but the real killer follows, the pyroclastic flow. A hot avalanche of gas and rock racing down the slope at 100 kilometers an hour. Fast, heavy, inescapable. We've seen it at Mount Sinabung in Indonesia and at Mayon Volcano in the Philippines. This is the hard truth. A Pelayan eruption's deadliest weapon isn't what it throws into the sky. It's what it sends racing down its slopes. Now we reach the summit of volcanic power, the Plinian eruption. The thickest, most gas-charged magma erupts with unimaginable force, up to VEI-8. A towering column of ash and gas pierces the stratosphere, spreading into a vast umbrella cloud that darkens the world below. Ash rains for hours, day turns to night. Then the column collapses, triggering pyroclastic infernos that sweep across the land. When it's over, the emptied magma chamber caves in, leaving a caldera, a scar where a mountain once stood. In 1991, Mount Pinatubo showed this power. Its eruption column hit the stratosphere. Ash turned day to darkness for 36 hours. The summit collapsed and the landscape drowned in ash and lahars. This is the Plinian eruption. It destroys mountains and reshapes the planet. Now you speak the language of volcanic fury. You can read its engine, style, and size. You've seen magma create rivers of fire and explosions that change worlds. But there's one more story written in the volcano's very shape. In the next episode, you'll learn to read a volcano's silhouette and trace the violence that built it. See the cone? Predict its composition. The evidence is set in stone.